Hello, wanted to do a little video on shock. I had recorded one earlier and decided to update it, uh, make it sound a little bit better. Five types of shock I want to just discuss today. First one is hypovolemic shock, where we lose fluid or have a low volume. Second one is due to a problem with the heart or cardiogenic shock. I'm going to mention distributive shock, where we have a problem with all the blood vessels or pipes to the body and sending blood to the right places. Obstructive shock is when one of the blood vessels get blocked and then there's respiratory shock. And I just want to mention that uh, respiratory is, is really not what I think of as a normal shock. We have a problem breathing like an airway obstruction. Hypovolemic shock, we break into two types, hemorrhagic and non-hemorrhagic. With hemorrhagic, we get excited as EMTs and paramedics because that is where we have blood loss. And that kind of is, is usually a, a challenging call for us. Um, here the big thing is to control the bleeding. Stop the bleeding and uh, treat, for, treat for shock. Non-hemorrhagic shock is when we have lost too much volume due to something like vomiting, diarrhea, infection, uh, diabetic keto ketoacidosis, but for some reason we have lost volume, um, but it's not bleeding. So it's still hypovolemic shock, just non-hemorrhagic or non-bleeding type of shock. Cardiogenic shock has two origins. One is because the rate has a problem, or the other one is the heart just can't beat strong anymore. With the rate, it can be too fast or too slow. So if you see heart rates in the 180s or above, that's three times a second. Think about that for a moment. Three times a second, your heart's beating. Just not enough time for it to fill back up. You also could have a heart rate that's too slow, like let's say 20, 30, um, just not gonna be able to put out the cardiac output when it is that slow. The other type is if you've had a problem with the heart, like you've had a heart attack and part of the heart muscle has died, the myocardium has died, it just can't pump well anymore, so it can't put out the volume it needs to. If this happens on the left side of the heart, the blood backs up and goes into the lungs and you have congestive heart failure or rails within the lungs. If it's on the right side, it backs up into the body, so you typically see pedal edema or swelling in the feet, and you may also see neck vein, jugular vein distension. With distributive shock, uh, the pipes or the blood vessels are damaged or not uh, normal diameter and uh, can't send blood where it needs to go. This can be due to neurogenic, anaphylactic, or septic causes. With neurogenic shock, we have damaged part of the spinal cord, and normally the sympathetic and parasympathetic keep a balance and keep your blood vessels in the right diameter. This allows the blood to go to the right places at the right time. When the spinal cord gets damaged, the blood vessels no longer have sympathetic control and uh, the parasympathetic takes over and the blood vessel dilates. Something similar to this happens with anaphylactic shock and septic shock. With anaphylactic shock, though it's not a neck injury, this is due to a severe allergic reaction and causes your blood vessels to dilate, in essence, to try to help dilute the poison a little bit. Um, and this can cause the blood pressure to drop significantly. <clears throat> With septic shock, we now have an infection. So this will look a little bit different in that the skin is usually um, warm or hot to the touch or they have some other signs of an infection. Uh, but they may still have tachycardia and low blood pressure with this. For the advanced providers, check for your entitled CO2 or lactate levels to see if they're going into septic shock. And this is um, getting a lot of attention right now. There's um, a lot that we need to do for this to, to try to treat this and, and prevent it from getting worse. If we have early treatment, um, we can have a decent survival with it. Obstructive shock is when something has blocked or obstructed the blood flow. This could be a pneumothorax, a tamponade, or a pulmonary embolism. With a tension pneumothorax, you have a collapsed lung and you have a lot of air building up inside the chest cavity and this causes incredible pressure. In fact, so much pressure, the blood cannot return to the heart. So you have a decrease in preload, which lowers the cardiac output and lowers the blood pressure. The fix for this is to get the air out of the chest. With a cardiac tamponade, you have a fluid buildup between the pericardial sac, which surrounds the heart, and the myocardium. As the sac fills up with fluid, oftentimes of blood because of a penetrating trauma, it no longer allows the heart to expand and can't pump out the blood. You'll see this with muffled heart tones and a narrowed pulse pressure. Pulmonary embolism, this happens when you have a blood clot form somewhere in the body, oftentimes in the leg after a prolonged 
sitting or, or laying. In fact, binge watching is causing an increase of this, so be careful if you're watching hours and hours and hours of television. But the clot breaks loose, travels through the heart, goes into a pulmonary artery, and then as the arteries get smaller, it gets lodged into one of the arteries. Everything downstream from that begins to die. That area no longer receives blood flow. Without blood flow, you cannot have the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange, so they become hypoxic. And if this is large enough, there may actually be a drop in blood pressure from this. Hope this helped.